Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Symbion and Through with Monty. Well, this was the shock felt around the world. Olympic gymnast and the greatest of all time, Simone Biles decides at first to withdraw from the team competition and then eventually she withdrew from the all-around, electing not to defend her title. So it caused a lot of speculation as to what really happened, what was going on. Naturally, a global icon like this, people are going to worry. And there was just a lot of concern. So it comes to find out that we actually have the answers as to why she withdrew. Okay, why did Simone Biles withdraw at Olympics? Here's what we know about her status for Tokyo and beyond. See, Simone Biles suffered from a phenomenon that a lot of gymnasts suffer from. And it's very common in the, uh, common in the gymnast world, or I should say in the world of gymnastics, and in the world of diving. It is a phenomenon known as the twisties. But before I go on, I want you to read this because people were, unfortunately, they're not familiar with gymnastics or diving or twisting and tumbling and the effects of which that can have on the brain. And they accuse Simone of bailing out, having a panic attack or whatever, are just being upset because she couldn't do the routines. It was all kind of excuses, like um, by mental health. They mean she caved under the pressure. Hope she's able to recover, but uh, I don't know. Gymnastics usually don't compete in their mid-20s, let alone late-20s. So basically, they're talking about um, she caved in, which, no, she didn't cave in. She's too mentally strong for that. See, they're accusing her of doing something that she just didn't do. Um, you brought up, look at the bottom one. You brought up a lot of good points in that interview. Just uh, really didn't uh, help at all. Back in 1996, Carrie Strug continued to compete. What is that? On a broken ankle. Uh, that's a lie. Carrie Strug had a sprained ankle. Big difference right there. They're trying to compare, which is silly though. It would make no it would make sense if there was a history of it to happen after so many clutch performances. I don't know about that. However, both John McEnroe and Michael Jordan walked away from their sport on top and then came back uh that something. So I feel like there's a certain effect on to make the US look bad in any way possible. I don't know who they're trying to uh point the finger at. I don't know who's a, who's a who. Let me suggest another, add another L to the U.S. this year. I fully agree with you on this one. You don't get to consider yourself the greatest of all time, then quit. See, they're judging someone and not really understanding why she quit. Now, this is going to make them look foolish, but I'm sure pride and ego is not going to have any one of them to say I was wrong or to apologize because she has a very legitimate reason as to why she quit. And contrary to popular with this, uh, what this guy said here at the top, there's no history of it. There is a history of it. We'll get into that. You can't self-brand as the GOAT and then, uh, uh, then quit when you're competing at the highest level. Well, if your life is in danger, you can. Laughing my A off. Uh, what a lame excuse. I wish I can, I can become so stressed they're blaming on stress, blaming it on stress, which that was not the case. I could just work because of mental health. Okay. USA has very disappointed at this Olympics, that's your opinion. Sometimes Olympics is not about winning medals. It's about doing your best. Uh, spot on, please, people. Uh, you put goat on your uniform and you show your country you are a sheep. 
Uh, this isn't her first Olympics. Uh, quit making excuses for these kids. The interview makes them sound like Hollywood brats with privilege. How about girls that didn't make the team? Please also fire the coaches. Okay, you're speaking prematurely. Even the tone of her voice at the press conference made her sound like an uh, entitled spoiled brat. The attitude was like, how dare anyone even question my decision? Obviously, these people right here are not fan of hers. They're critics of hers, and they just couldn't wait to go in at the least little thing. Now we're going to see what really happened. Simone Biles got the twisties during the vault, and it could have been deadly. It could have been so deadly that she could have been paralyzed had she landed awkwardly on her neck. She could have broken, she could have really broken a knee. I mean, she could have been out of sports forever. So thank God that she did quit while she was ahead. Thank God that she didn't try to risk anything to please anyone. And with some people, they are disappointed. Some of these guys back there, or whoever wrote that, they were critics. But you do have some people who put so much emphasis on winning, and they connect themselves to an athlete. It's almost like when they win gold, they win gold. When they lose, they lose. So to some degree, by attach attaching themselves to Simone Biles, for a lot of people, it doesn't make them feel good. Because she did not really, um, well, she did not compete her all around gold. But so what? She didn't have to. She doesn't have anything to prove to anyone anymore. If Simone Biles wants to, she can quit gymnastics right now and still be considered the greatest of all time. So let's read what some people who have gone through the twisties who know what this is about. This is Emily Gambolova. Now, she has some experience. She goes on to tweet that Simone Biles relating to gymnastics worldwide here. They saw a little bit in, in practice, having a little bit of the twisties, the twisties, the absolute worst. Catherine Burns says, hi, are your friendly neighborhood former gymnast and diver here to attempt to explain the mental phenomenon Simone Biles is experiencing, the dreaded twisties. So apparently it is a mental block, a mental thing is definitely is something mental. So Simone Biles was not lying, she was not faking, she was not being coward, she was being very smart. She knows her body. Okay, Catherine Burns goes on to say, when you are flipping or twisting or both, it is very disorienting to the human brain. When training new flips and twists, you need external cues to learn how it feels to complete the trick correctly. In diving, a coach yells out, and you kick your body straight and pray. So I just read that part right there. Okay, once you've practiced the trick enough, you develop a neutral pathways that creates uh, kinesthesia, which leads to muscle memory. Your brain remembers how your body feels during the trick, and you gain air awareness. Okay. Think about something that took you a while to learn and, and, and required a, 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 a lot of concentration at the time to get it right. But it now is second nature. Driving a car is a good example, especially stick. Let's go on to read this. Suddenly, in the middle of the freeway, right as you need to complete a tricky um, merge, you have totally lost your muscle memory of how to drive a car. You have to focus on making your foot press the pedal at the right angle. Turn the steering wheel just to shift gears. It's terrifying. You're moving away too fast. You're totally lost. You're trying to think. But you know you don't uh, usually have to think uh, to do these maneuvers. You just feel them and you do them. I got it. 
The twisties are like this and often happens under pressure. You're working so hard to get it right that you stop trusting your muscle memory. You're getting lost in the air, second guessing your instincts, overthinking every movement. We're not in a sport that we do not know anything about. This phenomenon is very common among gymnasts. It's very common in the gymnastics and diving communities. But for lay people, this is something that we're just hearing about. So no, it was no excuse. It was not anyone feeling the pressure, so to speak, or backing down. It was not anyone who was afraid. It was a real situation. It was a real phenomenon. It was a real medical condition. It's a real mental condition. It's all of those things. But it's a very legit reason to not to continue on. Your health and your well-being and your quality of life is much more important than a gold medal. And thank God Simone knows that because she did bail out. Now I do hear that she's training again, which is good, but she knows that she has nothing to prove to anyone. That I'm hopefully, if she is, this is just for the love of the sport. And her condition has improved to the point where she can do it. If not, she leaves us with a ton of memories for years to come. And most of all, she leaves us in good health. The most important thing is that in a sport that is unpredictable and dangerous like gymnastics, the most important thing is not any medals. The most important thing with that sport is that you can walk away from there whole. And we believe that Simone Biles will do this. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty, and I will see you all beyond and through.